Matter of fact, this book, if you want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire, I followed these principles for the last six years, going on six years now. And guess what? It's made a $6 million. It's made a million dollars a year. Readers are leaders. And if you want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire, you have got to improve. These are some of the books I'll share with you in this episode that absolutely changed my life in the last 12 months. And I hope it gives you an interesting perspective to help you advance forward in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad happening in three, two, one. Let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Sapali here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, the home of the Seven Figure Squad. And I'm wearing some merch here from sevenfiguresquad.com. Entrepathlete sweatshirt. What does entrepathlete mean? That means we treat business like sport. That your dreams, you're very business about it, you're very professional about it, you play very loose about it, you have fun with it, you compete about it. That's what entrepathlete means. Pick up your merch here at sevenfiguresquad.com. So, guys, if you haven't watched our Vlogmas episodes, it's been every day since the 1st of December that we're releasing a new episode to help you understand a few things. Help you understand and increase your financial literacy so you can win the money game. And number two, help you improve your cash flow income strategy for 2021 so you can put this pandemic behind you and anything that might come your way so you financially rise above any situation. And three, leadership and personal development because you cannot outgrow your identity. Your income cannot make more. If you want to make more money, you got to grow you. And so in this episode, we're going to be discussing that because most likely you're seeing this on a Saturday. So if you're cozying up on the couch, hopefully you snuggle up with a book and you're reading some things that will grow you, that will have you thinking about money in a completely different way. And so let's start with the book here, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. I love this book. I wish I read this book many, 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 many years ago. And it was suggested to us a few years ago by my mentor. And he said, if you want to be a millionaire, you've got to understand the secrets of the millionaire mind. Uh, author is T. Harv Ecker. And uh, just a couple of things I, I just want to share with you in this book is he, talk, he talks about thoughts, feelings, actions, create results. How you see things is how you do things. And if you see the world as a problem, if you see the world that people owe you things, if you see the world that somebody's uh, supposed to give you a head, a heads up, supposed to give you an inheritance, supposed to give you whatever you want and need instead of you actually working for it, well, you never get it. That's not how millionaires think. And so a lot... A lot of times I thought throughout my entire life that, man, you know, that person's lucky. I looked at their house. I looked at their car. Man, must be lucky to be them. And a certain amount of resentment would come across my way and saying, you know what? Uh, you know, they got a head start in life. I didn't. What was me? You know, they, they probably were talking about money a whole lot uh, earlier in their life and da, 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 da. Without realizing, I was just digging myself mentally in the grave and I'd never get anywhere with that type of attitude. And so you cannot fix the outer you unless you fix the inner you first. Let me read that one more time. You cannot fix the outer you. You cannot fix the house you live, the neighborhood you live in, the, the bank accounts, the car you drive. You can't fix externally what's going on in your life and first until you fix what's going on internally inside your heart, your spirit, your mind. And when you think about the secrets of the millionaire mind, it's about reprogramming. How many guys want to create generational wealth? How many guys want to say, yeah, I want to make sure I bless the next generation. I want to be able to give my kids. I'm going to give my kids everything. Listen, guys, I can't tell you. In the last five and a half years, specifically mentoring people to get ahead financially, I can't tell me how many people have gone through our doors. Our doors get packed. People get packed through our seminars and workshops. It's an open workshop. People can come here and be immersed in our environment, be immersed in our thought process, be immersed in our system. I can't tell you how many times people come in Tears in her eyes, weeping. I'm going to win for my kids. I'm going to win for my family. And next thing you know, they're losing because they ain't showing up anymore. You know why? It's how they think. And if they're not thinking right, they're not doing right. I can't tell you how many times when push comes to shove, somebody's about to come through a breakthrough and they quit. Why? Because they didn't change their programming. And we think about programming yourself. You got to reprogram that thought process that causes you to quit at the very moment you're supposed to have a breakthrough. Oftentimes, I see a lot of people, man, they're about to change, about to, about to get to another level of income. They're about to get to another level of their business, about to get to another level of their relationships. And next thing you know, they ghost out of here. Can't find them. Why? Don't know. Don't know. I, I can't figure it out. And so if you want to bless your family, you'll hopefully find a system in 2021 to follow through. And how to help you follow through is changing your programming. And this book by T.R. Becker is going to teach you how to program your mind. He talks about roots create fruits. Roots create fruits. So if you have roots uh, internally about money that are deep, 
that are solid, that stand the test of time, guess what's going to happen? It's going to produce fruit that's going to bless you and bless other people. So having different fruits, you got to have different roots. Or you got to uproot yourself and plant yourself in different ground. You know, when I, when I came here uh, to Chicago, you think I built my business in my old neighborhood? When I came out the military, you think I, I associated with some of the same people I grew up with? I can't tell you right now, my entire business, one person I went to high school with. Can't tell you one person I grew up with that's even part of my family. Listen, I love my family. I do anything for my family. But nobody, I'm, I'm Filipino for crying out loud. You know, we got big families. But there's not one person in my entire family that's in business with me. You know why? Because I decided to uproot my roots and plant different fruits. And guess what? In my entire family, I'm the only one that's a first generation cash flow millionaire. And so what I love about his wealth principle here, he's got a wealth principle number five in his book, um, Secrets of Millionaire Mind. He says, rich people focus on opportunities, broke people focus on obstacles. Woo! So think about this real quick. An opportunity is laid your way. It's laid right before you. Here's the first thing that comes to your mind. Oh my gosh, I got to invest my money. Boom, that's the first obstacle. Oh, I'm not sure if I got time. That's the second obstacle. You know what rich people say? You know what millionaire minds say? Hmm, what's the opportunity here? If I can piece, get a piece of my investment, my portfolio here, a little bit of my time here, what will that manifest? Who will it help? Will it help other people? Will it help myself? Will it help my family? Help my loved ones? Is this really an opportunity? Let me unpack this. Let me peel back the onions of the layer here and decide if this truly is and analyze if this truly is an opportunity. Broke people say, oh my gosh, I got to invest money. Oh my gosh, I'm not going to get paid right away. Oh my gosh, you know, what happens if other people don't see this? Well, that's part about being a first generation cash flow millionaire. I mean, if you're raised by a millionaire, you probably have no problem right now making a million bucks. Why? Because you're raised by something that fed you roots and expectations. So therefore your fruits become different than a lot of other people in America. And it's part of the roots I'm feeding my own family, my own children. You know, I tell them, listen, your roots are based on hard work. It's an effort. You want things, you earn things. I'm not going to give it to you. You know, part, part of me uh, raising my children because, you know, we were, we were uh, living in a, a very nice neighborhood with very nice schools. Everybody in that school that turned 16 got a new car. Everybody at 16, and by the way, it just wasn't a new car. It was a BMW, it was a Mercedes Benz. There ain't no way in hell I'm giving my kids, even though I got money, to give them a brand new car. That's not the fruit I'm teaching them because our roots aren't there. Because you never value things that are given to you. You only value things that you own and that you have skin in the game to take care of. So when I'm thinking about the secrets of the million mind, I highly suggest you read this book. If you want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire, phenomenal book. If you want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Second book is a novel. I love this book. By the way, I'm going to give you a quick version of this, but a uh, high suggestion. This is a big, thick book right here. You know, how, how, many, uh, how many pages? This, you'll, you'll, this is almost 1,200 pages. <laughs> Uh, this this updated version. This is exactly uh, this is exactly 1,168 pages. Big, thick book and small writing. <laughs> this will take you for a minute, but well worth the read. I believe this is Mark Cuban's uh, favorite book. But the reason why I suggest this book to you and why it helped me become a first generation cash flow manager, because again, it helped me understand this economic system called capitalism, of which our country is built on. It's a big reason why we're the youngest country. But we got the strongest military, the strongest economic system. We're a blessing to other countries and citizens. People want to come here to America to achieve their American dream. Why? Because it's built on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in this economic system called capitalism, which I love. And uh, there's a, a scene that goes on here in the factory. Okay, this guy's a factory worker, and uh, next thing you know, this this uh, the, the the situation is happening. This novel that government is getting bigger. Things got cost more money. Airplanes cannot fly anymore because it costs too much money to put gas. People don't want to own cars anymore because it's too much money to fill their cars with gas. So the only thing that's going on, the only game in town right now is railroads. And so there's a scene in there where the, uh, the person is working at the factory. And the conversation is, it has been slipping into bigger government, socialism, socialistic type of principles and values. Started slipping into the conversation based on this novel. And there's a scene in the factory. This guy's like, okay, I'm, I'm working hard, working hard. And, it's, and the foreman says, okay, guys, listen, uh, man, you know, Johnny here on, on second shift, you know, he's having some financial hard times and he's really financially set back. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of your hourly wage and we're going to put into a, a collective um, account and we're going to give that to Johnny because he's going through some bad financial times. So everybody involuntarily, you're going to contribute to helping Johnny out, even though he can work overtime, he can work double shifts, even though he can find other jobs or opportunities. 
but collectively, since we're all here working at this factory, you have to involuntarily contribute to this, so therefore we can help out our buddy. Guess what this guy did? He took his hat, he took his gear, he said, guys, I'm out of here. Peace out. Gone. Never to be seen again. And then what happened throughout the, throughout the book, people started going to concerts, and next thing you know, the, the act never showed up. And all that was left there on the piano, because everybody was waiting for this uh, pianist to do a concert. All that was left on the piano was this card that said, who is John Galt? Who is John Galt? And uh, uh, scientists, they were supposed to show up to find a cure to cancer, or find a cure to diseases. And next thing you know, they find, hey, how come Dr. So-and-so isn't here? And all they see in his desk, who is John Galt? People, some of the best talent, people, some of the best musicians, entertainers, influencers, bankers, entrepreneurs, they kept disappearing. They stopped showing up to their office or place of business or place of work. And all that was left was this card that said, who is John Galt? Some of the best minds were disappearing from this country. And when you're looking at this uh, book at the same time too as well, is really to see where John Galt saw the world, which is really the, the power and glory of the human mind. How innovation and, and understanding the right of individuals to use the minds for themselves, for their own self-interests, without dependency on somebody else. And we're looking at uh, how innovation and self-reliance was described throughout this book in freedom, in freedom from what? Smaller government, not bigger government. You should see who the heroes are in this book. Entrepreneur. You should see who are the, the, the cronies were in this book. I can't give it away, but you gotta read this book. But you're gonna see government, you're gonna see capitalism and socialism, and see how, how it really applies to how we're voting, how the country is gonna be run going forward based on how you operate as an individual citizen and how you're teaching the people in your community, how important your vote is and how important it is to get involved in your community by based on the economic values and principles discussed here by the author named Ayn Rand. And one of the things that I realize is that if people are given a chance to to innovate, to create, to be self-reliant, to be something um, that uh, it manifests because it's supported by the community, not clamped down because of the government. It creates a unique, unique country. And that's the type of country I love to see more of in the United States of America. And probably that's an ideal. It probably never happened. But it's an ideal that I think that if you watch this movie, maybe it might move you to making better decisions of your life. Because as you operate as a person that wants to make a million bucks. When you make a million bucks, don't you want to keep more of it? And when you make a million bucks, don't you want to say, this is my house instead of having to depart and leave this country because things here back home aren't working the way it's supposed to be and more people want to dig more into your pockets? These are things to be thinking about when you're reading this book, Atlas Shrugged. By the way, quick side note, if you don't want to read 1,000 pages, go watch the four-part DVD series. You can order this on Amazon. I'll, sh I'll show it right here. It's called Atlas Shrugged. It's got a person here with a big globe, you know, Atlas Shrugged. If you're watching over the weekend, if you're going to binge watch something, binge watch that. And last but not least, you got to pick up the book and read. If you haven't won this yet by now, by the way, we're going to have a contest uh, for this book here uh, uh, before we end. But if you haven't picked it up already, which is a Wall Street Journal bestselling author, my mentor and uh, a CEO, founder of PHP Agency, a host of Value Entertainment, host of the Bet David podcast, Patrick Bet David, uh, wrote this book this year. And discuss your next five moves. Powerful, powerful book. Matter of fact, this book, if you want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire, I followed these principles for the last six, going on six years now. And guess what? It's made a six million dollars. It's made a million dollars a year. And if you read page 48, Patrick shares a very funny story about my wife and I when we went to Dubai. Um, but he discusses more importantly, move number one. The most important thing, especially we're about to make some big moves in 2021 or the year ahead. And, and he asks the first question, before you make any other, other moves, there's five moves, there's four other moves after move number one. You know what move number one is? Here's move number one. Move number one is this question, who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? Who do you want to be? And oftentimes people are working hard. Uh, you can read all the comment section on my Facebook page or the other comments here on my YouTube channel. Uh, some people give me good feedback, some people give me challenging feedback, some people are just flat out nasty, some people are just out of blessing. But you can tell that there's a lot of people out there that make comments on my videos that I'm not so sure they're clear about who they want to be. I'm not so sure exactly what financial principles or economic principles they're grounded upon just by the words that they use. You know, we're all grown adults and, you know, uh, listen, I come from the Marine Corps and, and if, listen, uh, my first thing when you come across me, I'm going to give you trust and give you respect. I'm, I'm going to give you an opportunity to have me like you. 
But there's people out there just flat out nasty. And I think part of the big reason is they're not sure who they want to be. And when you study the most important product in your life, Patrick talks about the most important product in your life. You know what the most important product is? The most important product you can invest in, the most important product you can develop, the most important product for you to acquire is you. You got to understand you. You got to understand how you're wired. You got to understand how you're thinking about things. You have to understand why you react to certain things. You got to understand you. And Patrick has got an amazing way to process that, how to process issues and how to understand you in just the first move when you read this book, your next five moves. And when you get to study you and you get to master you, you get to say, oh my goodness, I didn't realize this potential was here. Oh my goodness, I didn't realize this talent was here. I didn't realize that I, I'm built for this. Listen guys, I never thought in a million years I'd be involved in the insurance industry. In, never million, in a million years, I never thought I'd be an entrepreneur. The last thing I was thinking about when I was in a military, when I was in the Marine Corps at 17, 18 years old, deployed overseas, the last thing I was thinking about was being a first generation cash flow millionaire. I was thinking about partying, I was thinking about going to the clubs, I was thinking about uh, drinking some brewskis, I was thinking about having some fun in Tijuana, Mexico, when I was stationed in Camp Pendleton. I was thinking about uh, partying in Kadena when I was stationed in Okinawa, Japan. I was thinking about uh, lighting up Phuket, uh, uh, Phuket Beach there. But when I'm thinking about the future self of, my, uh, of, of what I'm about to accomplish, I never thought about who I wanted to be. It was just for the next day. You know, I think my Mexican friends say it best. Mi vida loca. My crazy life. I want to live a crazy life now. I want to, li I want to live for this weekend. I want to live to Friday. You know, I want to live to, to, to spend it out. What's the point in saving? You're going to lose it anyway. The reason why that is put out there is because sometimes people just don't know who they are, who they want to be, and what they want to become, and the steps necessary to actually get there. Because you've got to understand here in America, you know, people come to America for one big thing. It's called the American dream. There's more people come to America in this country, more than any other country in the world, and more people come to America to have and establish their dream, or immigrants are coming here. I think there's a fact out there that more immigrants, statistically speaking, are starting businesses in America than people are born here. Isn't that crazy? More, more immigrants are starting businesses that immigrate to the United States of America versus the ones that are actually born in America. Why? Because they understand an opportunity when a country allows them to have it. One of the parts there is like, what type of millionaire do you want to be? Do you want to be an entrepreneur? Or do you want to be an intrapreneur? So for example, Steve Ballmer, he purchased the LA Clippers. He purchased the LA Clippers for billions of dollars, but he wasn't an entrepreneur. He worked for Bill Gates for a period as a COO. Bill Gates started the business. He started Microsoft, but uh, I believe um, Steve Ballmer was like the number 30th employee of, of Microsoft. He came in afterwards, became the chief operator, worked themselves up. Another one is Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney Corporation. You know, to see what they've done with either Disneyland or Disney World, the theme parks all across the world, to see their pivot and adapting and moving into incorporating Disney Plus, competing with Netflix, what he's done as a company, starting off as a producer, working the network, and then next thing you know, becoming the CEO, entrepreneur, working up. He didn't start, he didn't start with money and the capital to start Disney, but now he's a multi, multi, multi-millionaire, but he was an intrapreneur, you see? Sometimes people think the only way you make money is becoming an entrepreneur. That's the only way for you to be a business owner, an entrepreneur. Sometimes people aren't wired to be that way. Part of me, part of me becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire is, is a combination of entrepreneurship and also entrepreneurship because I came into a platform, a platform that I'd have to have come up with seed capital to, to build, but I was able to leverage it and use it. So therefore, when I come into this platform, I become a first generation cash flow millionaire because all you got to do is just point me and tell me what I got to do and I'll do it and do it faster, bigger, broader than anybody else. That's part of being an entrepreneur and intrapreneur combined together. So it could be a combination. You might be a hybrid type person, but you won't know that unless you know who you are, which is move number one. You gotta know you, you gotta study you. The other part of this is also what Patrick talks about is avoiding the four Gs. When I see a lot of people in business, when I see a lot of people, when they finally start getting money, start earning income, they get wrapped up in the four Gs. What are the four Gs? Gambling, gluttony, greed, and last but not least, guys or girls, depending on your so sexual orientation. Major distraction, major distraction for a lot of people that aren't clear about what they want because they were allowed the wrong decision. They allow themselves to hang out, get too overconfident about their current position. They put themselves in unnecessary risk and they get involved in relationships that later on divides their wealth due to divorce or bad partnerships 
because they're not clear on who they want. So move number four, before power moves number five, I believe is the next most important chapter, for me at least, is understanding scale. Because listen, if you're a person that knows how to make money, you know, make 50 grand, you might make 70 grand, 100 grand. If you know how to make that type of money, you can scale it up to making seven figures, but you gotta know who you are, you gotta know why you want it, and you gotta know how you're gonna get there. And this moves, these moves right here, being mentored by PVD, the last five and a half years going on six years, has made us a little over $6 million and uh, we're projected going to 2021, we have a game plan. I mean, my wife and I have got a game plan to say, you know what? We've got a game plan in 2021 to do some big, some powerful, we have a game plan to make $3 million in 2021 by simply scaling, understanding our metrics. And the, it's not just making the money, but it's how we're making the money and the scale in which we're making money and the amount of impact we're making through our current business and how it's gonna to continue to grow in the year ahead. So with that being said, guys, I love to know your thoughts. What type of books are you reading? What type of books is on your mind that you say, I want to be a first generation cash flow millionaire? So put it in the comment section below. What are you reading this week? And what are you going to read to prepare yourself for 2021 to make sure that's the greatest financial impact for you that you've ever had in your entire life? But before I let you go, I promised you we have a contest. Well, I want to give you this book. I want to give you this book, not only give you this book, but also a signed copy from Patrick and David, which was signed on 9-11-2020 when I actually went on his podcast and asked, him to sign a bunch of books for me to give away to you, the viewers of the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel and Money Smart Guy Facebook page. But I want to ask you a question and drop your answer in the comment section below in the top three answers on either Facebook and YouTube will get a signed copy from Patrick and David from my office to your address by answering this question. Watch this video, The Five Gotchas of Money, okay? Five Gotchas of Money. Now answer the question, which nation must you avoid so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire? Again, one more time, which nation should you avoid so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire? So I want you to answer like this, to become a millionaire, I must avoid blank. To become a millionaire, I must avoid blank. Put your answer in that blank in the comment section below. And you, first three, will win a book from me to you, personally signed by Patrick and David at 9-11 when he did a podcast on the Bet David Show, from my desk to your address. So that being said, guys, I hope that you're watching our episodes here on Vlogmas. We're committing to an episode every day from the 1st of December to the 24th of December to recognize our holiday season and to contribute and give back to you, the Seven Figure Squad community. With that being said, guys, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have done so already. And make sure you hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. With that being said, guys, I'm Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.